Hello there, my name is Zach Coons and I'm standing in an overgrown field during late spring in the wilds of Appalachia. I'm here today to gather and collect and make medicine from Trifolium pretense, colloquially referred to as red clover. In the Western herbalism tradition, red clover is used for a number of different things. It's a blood purifier, it's an overall tonic, specifically the flower is used medicinally. Um, but the way that I use it the most in my practice is for women who are experiencing premenopausal and menopausal symptoms. Uh, during that stage of their lives, the estrogenic levels begin to drop and red clover contains a phytoestrogen when taken medicinally made into a tea or a tincture can help restore estrogenic levels. Regarding identification and habitat this is a plant that's relatively simple to identify. It begins flowering uh, in my zone in mid-spring and will continue flowering through early summer until the sun begins to wilt it. Uh, it has three, generally speaking, uh, unless you're lucky, three leaves. The leaves have a marking of a sh mar the marking of a chevron on it and it has the bright fuchsia, I would say more than, than red flowering top. In Christian symbology, the three leaves of the clover represent the three faces of the divinity. But the lore goes back even further and is found in Greek mythology to symbolize a trinity of goddesses. So I've gathered the clover and have all the materials necessary to make a cold water infusion of the red clover. So what I mean when I say cold water infusion is more or less exactly what it sounds like. It's uh, basically pouring water over either fresh or dried herbs and letting them sit for X amount of time. Uh, the reason I'm opting for a cold water infusion uh, with these clover is that I, I often find that uh, flower medicine is, is pretty delicate and hot water can uh, destroy some of the catalytic enzymes that are medicinal. I will probably refrigerate it before the infu before I the infusion is finished. Uh, what that will do is because I've added about a, a quarter cup of sugar, uh, it will actually make this a it, it will create some wild fermentation. So I will get some of the beneficial bacteria that can populate my digestive tract in addition to the, the clover medicine. So that process will will likely take a couple of days. So I'm going to sit this in a cupboard away from sunlight uh, for about two days, anywhere between 24 to 48 hours, and then I will transfer it to my refrigerator and let it finish out the life cycle of its of its infusion. I generally let my infusions go anywhere between if anywhere from 48 hours up to five days. After that period of, of 
using the water as a solvent, I will strain, and the water it's and the, so the water itself will become the medicine after that period. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video today, and I'd ask of you if you've learned something today, don't keep it to yourself. Uh, share it with your neighbors. Share it with your friends. Share it with your co-workers, share it with your partner, share it with your mother, father, grandparents, and most importantly, share it with your children. These are vital, nourishing traditions, and they are in danger of becoming extinct through non-practice. And it is so important for all of us to be open circuits and to pass on the wisdom that we gain as we move through this world. So if you've learned something today, I'd ask for you to not keep it to yourself. Again, my name is Zach Coons, and I want to thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm.